guys, it's Amber from NotableInk.com and we are going to Copic Color and Echinacea Flower today. We're going to get right into it and then I'll tell you a little bit more about this stamp. I'm going to start off with B91, BV02, and BV04. Now immediately when I saw this image, it was it's an image from Sophia J. Caldwell and she posted a sneak peek of it on Instagram and I immediately commented, I can totally see that in blue violets. This is actually an echinacea flower. I thought it was a cone flower at first when she posted it on Instagram. It's echinacea, which is usually more of a fuchsia color, um, but I'm, I'm, I could totally see it in blue violet. So that's where we're going. I wanted to keep the petals looking translucent, which is why I went with my lighter blue violets and then added that B91 for the highlights. So super easy image to color. I'm basically, same formula that I always use for my flowers. I put shadow at the base where the petals overlap and then also in any areas where the artist has indicated there would be a shadow. Sophia has done a great job of adding just the right amount of detail to these images, especially when you blow it up into a large version. You can really see the detail clearly and it makes it easier to color. So these are great options if you are just getting started with Copic coloring and you need a little help to know where your shadows are. Look for some images that have a little more detail in them and that can really help you get started learning where you need to put those shadows in flowers. So one of the reasons I enjoy coloring flowers is because the shadows are predictable and easy to figure out. So here you can see how those turned out. I love the translucent look of those petals. Moving on to the stems and the leaves, I'm gonna be using YG03, YG61, YG43 in my highlights. That'll be the lightest color. And then I'll come in with G46 in the darkest part of the shadows. And so again, she's got these great indications of where your shadows need to be. So really easy to figure that out. And then of course you wanna put a little bit more down at the base, particularly where those two stems overlap each other. One of my favorite parts of this image are the leaves. These, these leaves are so cool. They're kind of more of those ripply, crumpled looking leaves. They have deep recesses in kind of each segment. She's added shadow marks to those areas. And so her depth, in addition to the Copic coloring depth that you can add, just add so much dimension and movement to these leaves, which is so fun. I haven't colored, well, that's not true. I did color leaves like similar to this in the Copic College class with Michelle Houghton, but we had to add a lot of the shadows. So the artist of those images didn't have quite as much detail to it. And so we had to a little bit more figure out how to create dimension like this. That was a really cool process to learn. I do highly recommend Michelle's classes. If you have a Copa College class um, anywhere near you, I would recommend taking that class. I learned so much in her classes. I actually took it two years in a row. Um, so I would recommend that. But these, the shadow that she adds really helps you figure out where to add that dimension. So for these tiny little stems here of what looks like baby's breath to me, um, I'm way up on the tip of my marker so that I can make sure that my lines are really thin. And I'm going to do a base coat in E00, so it's a super light, creamy color. And then I'm gonna come in with my favorite browns, which are the E70 family. So I'm coming in with E70 to add a little bit of shadow, and then I'll darken that up. And basically, I'm just adding small touches, just almost like little dots of E71 to just add just a touch more dimension in between those petals. Then I'm gonna use the same E70 family for the centers of the flowers. Now, um, I, this isn't the real color of what Echinacea would be, but as I said, this is my favorite neutral for the Copic colors, and so I use it quite a bit. So in the very highlight center, I've used E00, then I'm using the E70, the E71, and then I think I use, yeah, E77 for the darkest color. So I'm just kind of taking indications from how she's drawn it to determine 
how much of that darker color I need, where I need to put that. I'm really putting it at the base and then a little bit in the most concentrated areas of those little spikes. And I'm not really blending. I'm, for the most part, just adding little flicks of color. And so to add my sentiment, now normally on a digital stamp like this, what I would do is just make a sentiment with fonts. Um, this time though, it was late at night, so I decided to stamp it. This thank you stamp is from Alta New Flower Arrangement. Um, it also has an accompanying die, which is the same shape and size as the stamp as well. So um, I'll have that link down below if you're interested in that, but I love the scripty font of this and the size of it. Here's the finished card. I added a few sequins from Pretty Pink Posh, the marshmallow uh, confetti sequins. And again, I just, I, I love this set. <laughs> so I love this image. So um, be on the lookout for her new release. Until then, I'll have her link to her Etsy shop down below. You can check out what she currently has in her shop. Um, and you can expect the, her new images to be coming soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this quick Copic coloring and I will be back soon with more inspiration. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day.